Welcome back and thank you for staying with Africa News Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi and this is ANN7 Prime. And don't forget to join us on social media at ANN7 TV or you can live stream on our website. Well, we will be covering the 54th National Elective Conference of the ANC as of Thursday evening. So you can join us for those discussions. On to other news now. Government takes a tough stance on municipalities who fail to settle their water bill, some of which runs into billions. Water and Sanitation Minister. Stanom Vula Mukonyane announced water restrictions to owing municipalities with immediate effect. After collecting only 300 million rand towards over 10 billion rand debt owed to the department, Water and Sanitation Minister Numvula Mukunyane says implementing water restrictions seems to be the only way to make defaulting municipalities pay. The department will commence with the Russian restriction of bulk water supply to those municipalities that have failed to engage with the department and or make payment of their outstanding debts by the deadline of December 2017. We'll start off with reducing it by 20%. We won't, we won't reduce everything f fully to what we said we were going to do. We'll give them two weeks to, to respond there on the 20% and then we'll implement the full restriction per the, the 25 litre per person per day. Minister Mokonyane says of the 30 defaulting municipalities, the department identified five as the main culprits. We have five municipalities that are the main culprits now that we do believe a lot of engagement should actually be pursued with them and they are the ones who will be affected by, those, uh, by the, re the reduction of the pressure going forward. And that is the Msugaligwa local municipality, the Madibeng local municipality, Mafube local municipality, Malutia Pofung local municipality, and then the ones that owe the water boards is the Katong local municipality, Tanzabani local municipality, Ditobota local municipality, and Ngakamudiri Mulema. The minister, however, acknowledged that some of the municipalities that were battling to honor their debt was because they too were awaiting payments from other departments. We also urge government departments to pay local government monies that are owed to them for the services provided. We have been able to engage with one of the other provinces in ensuring that they pay a municipality that was one of the three culprits that had actually made the 10.7 billion uh, rents debt. And we are happy to share with you that there has been an improvement. The minister also touched on the water crisis in Cape Town, saying many solutions are being looked into, such as desalination plants. With this and the adherence to the water restrictions, which is currently sitting at 87 litres per person per day, the city should never have to reach day zero. Valerie Robinson, ANN7, Pretoria. Joining us live in studio is Prince Mlimandela and Amase, Water and Sanitation Department spokesperson. Minister Des Van Royen was Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs on the phone line. And we have Sienna Mkhehathe, Executive Manager at Salga. We'll start with you, Minister Van Royen, and thanks so much for your time. Just in fact, in, in uh, the water restrictions and how these will primarily affect the rural areas and what mitigating um, mechanisms do you have uh, to ensure that communities are not affected. But also we, we must pass our greetings to your uh, viewers at home. Uh, the road of the matter is that uh, as a collective of COFTA, uh, we, we have noted the, the recent announcement made by my colleague, uh, Minister Mkonyane, where he's indicating that uh, there are some municipalities that are uh, owing unparalleled amounts of money. But I must indicate that uh, in, in his in her indication, he made uh, a, 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 an appropriate uh, conclusion that uh, uh, municipalities are owing uh, uh, a debt of close to uh, just not above uh, 10, 10.7 billion. And I, so we we are we will also acknowledge the fact that uh, this amount is made of uh, 6.8 billion. That is owed to water boards, and uh, 3.9 billion of that is owed to the water trading entities. 
But I'm asking you that on, on behalf of our team, that is team of the, that uh, this number presented by uh, the water and the sun stations are raising a very, very sort of concern with regards to the governance and, of course, sustainability issues in the, the site that we respond to. And I'm asking you that, uh, that albeit some of these municipalities seem to be disputing the numbers, we are concerned as government that there are people who are paying for services that uh, they are receiving. And they might be affected by this water cut. And it is our collective view that uh, compliant customers should not be prejudiced by the invisage water cut. And hence, we are encouraging uh, municipalities that uh, they must pay. Uh, and they must, uh, of course, comply to the agreement that they have entered with uh, the Department of Water and Sanitation. And the, 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 the announcement made by my colleague during the media briefing that people who are paying will not be punished is extremely welcome. All right, Minister, please stay on the line. We have um, Limanjela Ndamase from Water and Sanitation as the spokesperson. How does it even accumulate to such a hefty bill? Well, I think over time we have been supplying water to a number of municipalities throughout the country. Obviously, there have been changes in local government, some municipalities being merged, some municipalities uh, losing their water service authority statuses to districts. And so there is some historical debt that has been inherited by some of the municipalities. Also, a part of our departmental mechanisms of trying to recover this money have not been as effective. And I think this is part of the weakness of trying to utilize all the avenues available to us within government, such as the intergovernmental relations forums, and trying to engage through the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs in trying to really find some of the solutions uh, that could lead us to being able to recover this money. Unfortunately, most of those attempts have fallen through. We have not been able to make the recoveries that we anticipated. And the, 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 the situation as it stands, and which we must explain to South Africans, is that this money for us is very important. Because one, it gives us an ability to build new infrastructure. We do know that currently over, just over 90% of South Africans have access to pipe water. And therefore, we still have our own targets and constitutional obligations to make sure that we connect the remaining 10%. We must maintain existing infrastructure, which is also very costly and requires us to be able to recover some of this money. And unfortunately, the fiscals cannot fund some of all, or all of our projects as would anticipate. And one of the things we need to demonstrate to Treasury is our ability to collect revenue. And part of that demonstration for us to be able to argue for more funds must be able to say we have done one, two, and three, and these have been our attempts in recovering some of the monies that were owed by the municipalities. Mm. Minister, and also the capacity of these inter-ministerial uh, or departmental um, structures within municipalities, whether there is capacity or whether m management is above board, how then are you going to recover monies if the municipality is always pleading poverty or that uh, they themselves are underfunded? So that, the recent misplaced understanding that uh, legislatively the, the ministry is empowered to collect uh, municipal debt and uh, I, I think that must be corrected. The other matter is that in terms of uh, the Municipal uh, Finance Management Act Municipalities uh, are, to a large extent, empowered to do their own revenue enhancement, but also their own credit control management system. So that should be corrected, because if we don't correct that, then uh, we are missing a very, very important gray area on the, the enforcement of our recommendation. Because we forever recommend, because remember, this is a perennial problem. It's not a new problem. We forever recommend that municipalities must introduce revenue enhancement system, but also municipalities must enforce uh, credit control measures. So uh, what we are looking at as COPTA now is how do we, as a, a national ministry, uh, assist municipalities to realize that particular legislative uh, objective. And that's where we are coming in, because I can tell now most municipalities are facing uh, various uh, or maybe uh, composite challenges in as far as uh, service delivery is concerned, but also in as far as payment of creditors and service providers is concerned.
And these challenges range from affordability by municipalities to service their debt, challenges with their billing systems, low levels of revenue collection, uh, and also lack of skills, uh, technical, but also financial management and a high number of vacancies on key positions uh, uh, in these municipalities. And I must indicate that uh, we are working around the clock to make sure that these challenges uh, are addressed. And we are not working in isolation. We are working with sector departments from national level. We are working with provinces as well as uh, uh, district municipalities and local municipalities affected. We are developing what we term intervention plans. And this intervention plan, in no time, there will be a, a national subject for discussion because they will be adopted by municipalities, they will be adopted by districts, they will be adopted by province, they will be finally adopted by the cabinet. So as, at the end of the day, if those uh, identified municipalities are not performing, then we are able to come with resolute and objective uh, uh, res resolutions in terms of how to deal with their situations. Minister Des van Royen, Minister of uh, Cocta, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, we thank you indeed. We'll continue here in studio just to break it down uh, in terms of the revenue collection, the consumption of municipalities vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the, the return on investment in terms of your infrastructure. Where is the, the gaps in that you may not be fulfilling your mandate in prov providing dignity, water and sanitation? Well, I think the minister has hit it on the head. Uh, he, has, he has cited a number of challenges within municipalities that are obviously a cause uh, or lead us to the consequence that we are currently in now as a department of where we must be able to collect these large sums of money. Uh, the challenges of capacity in municipalities, financial planning, etc., as the minister cited, are very serious and real challenges. But what we must say as the department is that whilst we provide the bulk water services to municipalities, municipalities in terms of the law are regarded as water service authorities, many of them, and therefore they also have a responsibility of being able to collect revenue from those clients who are able to pay within the municipalities. We do accept that there are indigent uh, uh, consumers within the municipalities. However, for us to identify the indigent consumers, we must be able to have a functional indigent register so that we can know who are those citizens of a particular municipality or households who are indigent and therefore cannot pay. But then we must also be able to know who are those that can pay and if they can pay, are we billing them accordingly? Are we collecting that revenue as the municipality so that we, by in turn we can then be able to pay the department? Okay, and which are the most non-compliant municipalities uh, that don't necessarily have the constraints in terms of capacity, that have no excuse not to pay? Well, if you look at, uh, at the list that the minister issued, she issued a list of 30 municipalities. Amongst those municipalities was one metro, which was Mangawung. Uh, the minister had an engagement with the executive mayor of Mangawung, including the officials from Mangawung. And one of the things that came up is that if you look at the debt of Mangawung, which is just about 500 million, it can be reduced by half if the provincial government of the free state can pay what they currently owe the city of Mangawung for water. So one of the engagements that is then being undertaken is to ensure that the provincial government immediately satisfies its own obligations to the municipality, paying for the water that has been supplied to them, allowing Mangawung to then be able to service the debt that they currently hold with the department. With the other municipalities, well, the analysis that we have done is that you've got a very high to extreme level of vulnerability in as far as revenue collection is concerned, in as far as the management of wastewater systems is concerned, as well as in as far as operations and maintenance of the systems are concerned. 26% of the municipalities that we have analyzed actually have over 50% in terms of water losses. And a further 26% are unable to account uh, for data or track what their water losses are. Now this tells you it is a serious management problem, it is a planning problem, and if we can be able to resolve it, we then would be able to recover also some of the revenue that we require. Part of the arguments made in the last week by organizations such as Salga was that municipalities do not have the monies to pay. But what we have since discovered with our engagements with the municipalities and the municipalities actually volunteering themselves to come forward to engage with the department is that the money is there, 
but it is a question of managing the money. It is a question of adequate financial management systems and being able to identify priorities of the municipality so that they can be able to service their own obligations. Because in terms of the MFMA, they are required to pay whatever monies that they hold and recover from their own consumers on behalf of other state entities. Mm. And how rigid is your process now going forward to get what is due to the department uh, in terms of timelines and uh, payment arrangements? Well, we issued notices to 30 municipalities, uh, and these municipalities were our highest uh, uh, debt uh, municipalities, owing over 50 million rand per municipality, and with that debt exceeding six months, or 60 days, sorry. Uh, and what we have then done is that many of those municipalities have come in. We have set a, a minimum threshold to say that we must be able to negotiate on the payment of 30% of the debt as an immediate uh, payment arrangement and plan. They must be able to service their current account, which is invoices that are no more than 30 days for their current usage on a month-to-month -month basis. And thereafter, we can then start looking at how we deal with the bulk of the debt. Because if in reality, if you look at some of these municipalities, and I'll cite Machabeng, uh, it's a municipality that owes the department over a billion rand, but unfortunately, its revenue would not be allowed to immediately pay the department a billion rand. But if you also look at the character of Machabeng, they've got very big mines, and two in particular, who pay for the bulk services that they are supplied by the municipality. However, once they pay, that money is not making its way to the department. And then we need to start investigating as to what are municipalities utilizing these monies for. And some of the big commercial users have now started engaging the minister to actually propose that they pay directly to the department or the water ports for the water that they receive so that they can guarantee the reliability of their supply. All right, let's go into the commercial space or even industry in their lack of compliance or transgression when it comes to paying uh, the water bill. How, how serious or intense is that? Well, as I have said, uh, the experience is that industries are paying for the water. Uh, industries are willing to pay. However, in some instances, industries are not being built uh, adequately and efficiently. They are not being provided with their statements on time and correct statements so that they can be able to pay for the services that they've received. And, and hence, they have made a call uh, in some areas to say, we would rather pay the national department or the water boards directly for the water that we receive so that we take out the inefficiencies that they currently experience within the municipal system. However, another challenge that has arisen with our analysis of the situation is where municipalities are actually selling water to industries cheaper than they are buying it from the department. Now, again, it's a question of capacity, it's a question of planning, and, and, and whether or not municipalities are able to manage their water systems efficiently so that they can be able to generate the necessary revenue for, for sustainability. Mm. Now, take us into your confidence. There has been a uh, scathing attack on the leadership, uh, primarily Minister Nomvola Mokonyane, in the managing the water crisis or whether it was communicated adequately and the necessary remedial action being taken. Are you, are you confident that indeed uh, the Department of Water and Sanitation is on par? Well, the attack on Minister Mukunyane has been deliberate. Uh, it has been informed by certain interests, mainly opposed to the transformation of the water space. None of the corruption allegations that have been posed against her have been proven in any particular court of law. The public protector has had investigations and exonerated the minister against some of the allegations that have been made against her. So I think at some point, we actually need to put this matter to rest, to say that we, we need to start dealing with the facts and moving away from the hysteria that is deliberately created to cast aspersions of the character of the minister. But what I must tell you is that the department in its nature Part and parcel of the problems that we have confronted, especially with regards to irregular expenditures, relate to how the department has had to intervene again in the municipal space. If you look at Guiani as an example, where the department was forced by a court order in 2013 and long before Minister Mukunyane was Minister of Water to say, National Department of Water, go in and intervene in Guiani. The hospitals are unable to function, kids are dying, and the people do not have access to water. Now, in terms of the laws, it is the municipalities who have the responsibility to provide water services to localities and communities, including hospitals. But here is a court order that is instructing the National Department to go in and intervene. And unfortunately, the National Department can't then sit back, especially in service to the people of South Africa, and not intervene where there are currently problems. As we speak, the Western Cape requires over 5 billion rand to intervene in as far as the drought is concerned. The minister cannot sit back and watch the Western Cape collapse because it is not in the interest of that particular province, nor is it in the interest of our country and our economy. And therefore, we must intervene and we must find the money 
to do that intervention. However, unfortunately, in terms of our laws and our systems of accountability, whatever monies we spent that were not budgeted for, because drought is not an event that you plan for and put in your APP, but it is an event that arises and then you are forced to respond. Whatever monies we then spend to, to save the, the Western Cape, we will be given praises today, but when the AG's report comes back next year, everyone will forget that we actually saved the Western Cape from what was perceived to be day zero coming in March 2018. It's a, it's a case of uh, you're doomed if you do and you're doomed if you don't, but we, are, we appreciate it. Our commitment it is to the people of South Africa and we will give them the service that the Constitution obligates us to do. Okay, really appreciate it. Prince Limande um, Ndela and Damase Water and Sanitation as spokesperson and we also had this Fandroyan Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Thanks for joining us. We'll take a look at the latest weather update.